Right, we've got here a model of a four-wheel drive and the first thing to demonstrate is what happens to the wheels and the drive shaft when the vehicle moves in a straight line. So you can see here that this drive shaft is connected to the back axle, that drive shaft is connected to the front axle. There's a little blue mark here and there's a little blue mark there and we've got on each wheel tape to indicate markers um, as to how far the wheel is going to rotate. So if I move the vehicle forwards you can see that the drive shaft is rotated at the same speed which is the blue marks up again at the same point and then all four wheels rotating at the same speed as well because we're going in a straight line. Continue that over here there's the blue marks coming up again in unison and there are the um, four red tapes indicating that each of the wheels has turned the same speed. So here's the model. We're going to drive it in a semicircle. Now we've placed a mark at each of the four wheels here so you can see how quickly they rotate. On a rear drive shaft here there's a blue mark. On the front drive shaft here there's another blue mark so we can see how quickly they rotate. So if we go around the corner here Taking a look at the front right wheel. You can see here that the front drive shaft already completed one rotation, in fact just a bit over. The rear drive shaft hasn't completed a rotation yet. And here the front right wheel has completed a rotation. The rear back wheel is coming up to a complete rotation but the rear left is not um, anywhere close. And here the front drive shaft's made another rotation, rear drive shaft nowhere near. Front left wheels made one rotation, well past the rotation, and the rear left just coming up to its first rotation. So you can see there that as a vehicle goes around a corner, each of these wheels turn at a different speed, this one fastest, this one slowest, and on average the front axle turns quicker than the rear axle, which is why the front drive shaft has to turn faster than the rear drive shaft. So what we've got here is a simple axle and it's driven by this shaft and that axle is fixed so whatever speed this wheel turns the other wheel must turn and that's a pretty simple setup you see it on go-karts and the like there. However it suffers from a big disadvantage when we go around a corner both wheels have to turn at exactly the same speed and that makes it difficult to go around a corner as you can see. Wheels are just skidding. If I try and turn a corner sharply that inside wheel just skids. Now if we contrast that with this, which is the same setup, but it's actually got a differential. So if we start the two there, look at that. You can see that there's no skid on the inside wheel. The differential is allowing the outside wheel to turn much quicker than the inside wheel. And then we can do that. Whereas with the other model, they both have to turn at the same speed and you can hear and see the skidding and the jumping. So that's okay with a Lego model on a surface like this. It's not okay when you've got a heavy car on a bitumen road because you get a lot of stress in the axle there which is why you need a differential to easily allow those wheels to turn. So what we've got here is a model of a four-wheel drive and it's got three differentials. It's got one at the front, one at the rear, and one in the center. We called it this one a cross axle differential because it's across an axle here on the rear axle and the same for the front one front cross axle differential. The one in the center is so called because it is centrally located between the rear and the front axle. I'm going to start the model up and all four wheels are being driven and that's that's great that's what you want for on-road traction. But if I start to put some resistance on this wheel here, you can see that the other wheel starts to spin. Now off-road, that's a pretty common situation. So you might have this wheel up against a rock or a rut, and then this wheel may be in the air, not have much weight in it, or be on a slippery surface such as mud. What that means is that this wheel is easier to turn than that wheel. Now the way the differential works is it 
equally splits torque or turning force between the two shafts of an axle, this shaft and that shaft. So the, this wheel over here will only get as much torque as is required to turn this wheel. And that's a problem because if there's very little force required to turn this wheel, that's all the force you're going to get there and that's not going to be enough to get the wheel up and over whatever obstacle is on. However, the advantage of a differential is that it allows you to drive both wheels on an axle at different speeds so you can go around the corner. Now it doesn't matter which one of these I slow down, I could slow down that one, or this one, or that one. The same effect happens all the way through. We've got here a one tenth scale radio controlled four wheel drive vehicle. It's got an open differential in the back and an open differential in the front, both of which can be locked. It doesn't have a centre differential because the front and rear axles are just permanently locked together, so it's the same as, as having a locked centre differential. So, to demonstrate that. Okay, so what you can see here is that the open differentials have basically sent all the drive to the wheel that's easiest to turn. And no amount of revving is going to change that. Now I'm going to lock the rear differential, we'll try that again. Now you can see there that the back axle is turning and both rear wheels are being forced to turn at the same speed because we've locked the rear differential. But we still can't get over that obstacle. Now if I lock both front and rear differentials, you can see there that the vehicle continues to climb even though it's actually got diagonal wheels in the air. If I unlock the differentials now, so it spins even going backwards. Unlock differentials and locked differentials. Okay, a few more revs. Yep, that's nothing going to happen. Okay, so again, increasing the revs makes no difference at all. The uh, rear axle is rotating, but that's nothing doing on the front right axle. So front um, right wheel, so we can't go anywhere. Here we've got our radio controlled car again. We're just going to do a turning test and it's in effect got a centre differential lock um, because there's no centre differential in the middle so in effect if there was one it would be locked out and we've got the differentials open. And you can see there that it's struggling to turn. The reason is because the front and rear axles are forced to turn at the same speed but it is turning and that's why there's stress on the drive car there. Now, if I lock the front and rear differentials and go around again, you can see that it's struggling to turn even more and, as a result, the turning circle is much bigger. So it's basically just destroyed that cone there. And it can't turn anything like as much. If I slow down the back axle, both rear wheels like this, you can see that the front axle continues to spin. And that's because the centre diff is doing its job here. And what that is doing, that's saying, well, the front axle is easy to spin, the rear axle is not so easy to spin, so I'm going to only send 
as much torque to the rear axle that the front axle can take. So say you're off-road and you're going up the hill and the front two wheels lose traction, they become easy to spin, you'll only get that same amount of torque going to the back axle, which might have really good traction, but there's just not enough torque going to the back axle to turn the vehicle. And same sort of deal here, I can slow down diagonal wheels. What's happening here is that the front differential is going, well, that wheel's hard to turn, so I'm going to spin that one, and the rear differential is going, that wheel's hard to turn, I'm going to spin that one. And same sort of deal here. The, this differential is saying, that wheel's hard to spin, I'm going to spin that one, that wheel's hard to spin, I'm going to spin that one. What I can also do is actually slow down or slow all three wheels. Now what's happening here is that the centre differential has to decide in effect which wheel is e which shaft is easiest to turn, the rear or the front. And clearly the rear is easiest to turn because that wheel's got no resistance on it. So very little torque is going to the front axle or to this wheel here. In fact, only the amount of torque required to turn that wheel. So with an open differential here in the back, in the centre and at the front, you can actually have one wheel spinning uselessly and then the three, other three completely stationary. And it doesn't matter which one it is, I could slow those down for example, or I could slow that one down. The same thing works. Now if I stop the engine, I'm now going to lock the centre diff. I'm going to just push this set of cogs across here. And what I've done now is I've eliminated the effect of the differential. The way that's done in a real life vehicle is there's cogs inside the differential here, but uh, what I've done is I've just put some around the outside. The principle and the result is exactly the same. In effect, this differential no longer exists. I'm going to restart the model here. And it's the same as it was before. All four wheels are spinning. And again, if I just slow this one down, you can see that the differential here is doing its job. It's allowing that wheel to spin faster than that, even to the point where it's slowing down. Same sort of deal, only getting the amount of, that's only getting the amount of torque required for this wheel to spin. Same here, same there. And I could even slow down these two wheels here. Or I could also do a cross axle like that. And this is a pretty common situation off-road. When you've got diagonal wheels in the air, let's say that those two in the air low traction, you'll see them spinning and these two wheels not going anywhere and that's because the front and rear axles are doing their thing of just distributing torque between an axle and not sending enough torque to this wheel and this wheel which are the ones that actually have traction you can turn, these wheels have lower traction hence they're spinning. Now here's the difference with the lock centre diff. If I start to slow down both rear wheels and an axle, you can see that I'm slowing it down, the engine's straining, but the front axle is still going. Whereas with the open centre diff, I could easily slow down the rear axle and the front wheel um, to a complete stop and the front wheel should just spin. Same sort of deal with the front axle. You can even hear the, hear the uh, gears actually jumped a little bit there. So that's the advantage of having the centre differential locked. That means that if you get to a situation where you're losing traction or you've got a resistance on the back axle here, the front wheels will still continue to pull you through and won't just spin uselessly. You'll still get torque to the back axle there. Whereas if you have an open diff, then as you saw, you can actually slow the rear axle completely, the front wheel spins. However, the lock centre diff will not allow the rear axle to turn at a different speed relative to the front axle when you go around the corner. And that means that you're going to get potentially a transmission wind up. So you only should run a centre differential lock when you're off-road and there is the ability for the front and the rear axle to turn at the same speed and there to be enough slip in the drivetrain to allow the uh, different wheel speeds to equalise without overstressing the transmission. All right, so here we've got the model again. The centre diff is unlocked. I'm going to start it up. And because the centre diff is unlocked, 
this drive shaft can turn at a different speed to that drive shaft if I hold those those back axle still continues to rotate in the front and the same deal there so let's see how that looks like we've got the very slippery slope here and we'll see how an apparent four-wheel drive works on that so you can see here what's happening is that the center diff is merely allowing this um, drive shaft to turn quicker than that that's completely stationary and these wheels are easier to turn in the back wheels the reason they're easier is because there's a weight shift towards the back and also there's the weight of the battery there but also there's not a lot of traction here so whatever torque it takes to rotate these um, wheels is exactly what the back wheels are getting and even though the back wheels got a lot of traction there's just no torque being or very little torque being sent into them and that's why the vehicle isn't going anywhere if I was to pick it up you can see that what I've done now is I've put no weight at all on these so the back axle is easier to turn there's weight on this so this is now harder to turn so that that's where the, the, the torque is going there so I'm trying that again this doesn't work okay now what I'm going to do now is actually lock the center diff so I'm going to put that there again primitive center diff locking mechanism so again four wheel drive as it was before but this time this axle has to turn at the same speed as that because we've, we've locked out the differential so let's see what difference that makes you can see there we've actually got traction okay still spinning but the point being that all four wheels are actually rotating in unison now and that's the purpose of locking the center differential offload. Here's the model with the center diff unlocked. I'm going to put it on the ramp. And all the torque is going just to one wheel there. You can see that it's just spinning, spinning, spinning. It's the effect of the differentials. Now if I lock the center diff, we'll get a different result. And you see there that we've got the two left wheels spinning. The two right wheels have got traction, but that was enough to get the vehicle further up the ramp. Right, we're now going to demonstrate why centre differentials exist and that's to avoid the problem of transmission wind-up. So centre diff is unlocked at the moment. What I'm going to do is just run the vehicle in a circle and then pick it up. Now watch what happens to these four wheels when I pick it up. Absolutely nothing. Now if I lock the centre differential Again, again, that's going to force the back axle to turn at the same speed as the front axle, but the wheels are going to try the opposite. The wheels are going to try and make this axle turn quicker than the back axle. So let's see what happens then. Okay, now I'm going to pick up the car again and look at what happens to the wheels this time. See that? There's a significant amount of stress built up. Now that's what we call transmission wind-up in a Lego model, it's only Lego, but in a real vehicle that can absolutely wreck your drivetrain and it gets worse whether you turn left or right and the further you, you continue to drive. All right, to summarize, diffs or differentials allow two axles to be driven at different speeds. And that's important so that when you're on a high traction surface, you can turn sharply and have no stress on an axle due to different wheel or axle speeds around a corner.
However, diffs also equalize torque on the two axles that they're driving, be that a center diff or a cross axle diff. And the problem with that is that when you're off-road or even in a race car, then you will tend to spin the wheel with least traction and that will mean that you're not going to be able to move your vehicle forwards. And there is a mechanism to disable the diff and that's called a diff lock or differential lock, either a center diff lock or a cross axle differential. And the diagram in the top right there shows that the front axle travels further distance than the rear axle and also the blue arrows there show the relative speed of the front axle, the rear axle and each wheel. So front and rear diffs then. So again two axles on a wheel turn at different speeds. Top right hand photo you can see that it would be very difficult to have parked the LC9 in that spot there if the front if the left and right wheels weren't allowed to turn at different speeds however off-road looking at the bottom right photo you can see that very little weight on the front left wheel and that can spin easily and that will detract from your progress so when you're on road because all four wheels are always on the ground and pretty much the same weight on them you don't really have a traction problem off-road you do have a traction problem because there's different weights on each wheel and each wheel can have radically different amounts of traction depending on its surface. So that's why we have cross axle locking differentials and they disable the diff to eliminate the one wheel spin problem but then that means you can't really turn corners so they're no good for high traction surfaces such as on-road driving. Now a centre diff or centre differential that allows a front and rear axle speed difference around a corner and when you're on road you've got good traction on all four wheels certainly between front and rear axle so there's no problem with wheel spinning. It's extremely unlikely when you're on road that your front axle would have very little traction and your rear axle have lots of traction. Off road that's exactly what you often get going uphill, downhill or mud, snow, whatever it is. So therefore you do get traction loss due to that differential effect and that's why there is a centre differential lock off-road. But diff locks, um, if you don't lock, if you lock your differential off-road then you won't get transmission wind up because the front and rear axles are on a surface loose enough to be able to allow the transmission to equalise the speed front and rear. On road then there's high traction on each of the four wheels and you get that stress building up between the four wheels trying to turn at different speeds and the front and rear axles trying to turn at the same speed. So a recap of what's what, there's your front diff, centre diff, rear diff. Torque is now as a turning force. You can apply torque and nothing can actually move um, but it's just simply a turning force. Differential, also known as a diff for short, front, rear and centre. Cross axle differential lock, um, also known as a diff lock or locker or in the case of a front cross axle lock, a front locker or a rear locker. And a centre differential lock, we call that a centre diff or sometimes a CD lock, CD for centre diff. We call a normal differential an open diff or unlocked and obviously one that is locked is called a locking diff. And wind up is that stress created in the drivetrain when the centre diff is locked and the vehicle drives around corners. So thanks for watching. Subscribe to this channel if you want to know more about four-wheel driving, towing or cars and there'll be more videos. Please feel free to comment with questions, clarifications in the YouTube comments or follow me on Facebook. Thanks again.